continuing to highlight the journeys of people across the Midlands who have experienced or are currently experiencing breast cancer. These survivors are facing the toughest battles of their life and really have survived some of the toughest battles. And they're still managing to give back and spread awareness. Joining us today is one of them, Sandy Bur Burris. Thank you so much for joining us, hey Sandy. Ladies, how are you? Good, good, good. Glad to have you here with us. Nice uh, Sandy, you, you do a lot in the community, uh, but you had to come to a halt when you were diagnosed with breast cancer. Briefly tell us about your journey and when you first was diagnosed. Um, I had actually retired from coaching mm -hmm. in 2019. Uh, I had started my real estate career and went for a routine mammogram mm -hmm. in April of 2021. I'm sorry, 2022. And uh, I'd agreed to come back and coach for South Carolina United for their summer um, free pro program. Mm -hmm. And I found out the week prior to all of my players coming in that I had breast cancer. Wow. So you currently coach for the South Carolina United Football Club Bantams, Bantams soccer mm -hmm. team. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you find out you have the cancer, breast cancer, but yet you still keep coaching. Some people would go hide in their room. You brought it out in the open and kept your schedule going. I think one, it was God's plan. I honestly think he knew I needed a team to take my mind off, to focus on. And honestly, finding out the statistics that one in eight women will have breast cancer, there were over 24 players on my team. So mm -hmm. realistically, three, three of my of players at would, some yeah. point are going to go through it. So why not show them that it's not a death sentence anymore? Yes. Yeah. A really inspiring story. And then you went through all of your treatment at Prisma Health. Uh, something I wanted to point out because we know that Prisma Health, obviously a part benefiting from the Walk for Life uh, that's happening in October. Tell us about your experience with the treatment there because we do know that when people register for that walk, uh, a lot of the proceeds are benefiting helping breast cancer patients with Prisma Health. It is. I have a unique circumstance. I actually live in Greenville. South Carolina and mm -hmm. I commute to coach here in the summer. Okay. So I get to be a part of both Prismas um, and get to see the work they've done throughout the state. Um, this summer I met quite a few of the ladies at Prisma. We did fundraisers, fundraisers at our games and Prisma is one of our sponsors also with the club. So my journey with Prisma, it's, it's funny when you get the diagnosis because it happened in a routine mammogram and mm -hmm. thank goodness I had a 3D mammogram. Um, so they caught it early, not early enough that it didn't get to one lymph node, but it's still early. Yeah. And my team was absolutely amazing. From my diagnosis, the hospital met, they came up with their treatment plan, my three doctors, my radiologist, my surgeon, and my oncologist met, and then they brought me in. And instead of me having to chase doctors all around, each one of them came in individually and yeah. spoke with me and shared what they would be doing. And then at the end, a nurse navigator came in. So it made the beginning of my journey very easy. Smooth, it was a smooth. Smooth yeah. when it could have been very frantic. Yeah. Yes, and you need that, that order. You need the smoothness of it to make it a little easier to go through. Mm -hmm. So it was stage one ductal carcinoma. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you had a 3D mammogram. So when we talk about mammography, usually a lot of people don't get the 3D because it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. Did you have the regular mammogram and they suspected something and that's why they went to the 3D or did you have a family history and that's why they did the 3D? I have no family history. I had a, di yeah. I had a distant cousin that should not have affected right. really my family history. Um, to show you how good Prisma is, actually the lady who checked me in and checked my insurance, she goes, oh honey, are you not getting a 3D? She goes, even if your insurance doesn't cost, let me look at the cost. She goes, I just always recommend to everyone to get a 3D yeah. mammogram. So glad and that that's she, why I did. Yeah, yes. and that was really helpful to get a closer look. Uh, let's was. talk about the Walk for Life. You are one of the models uh, this year. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tell little us, scary. Yes. Tell us about that <laughs> experience. You're the bottom of the barrel at this point. Oh, so. no. Tell us what you'll be doing. Um, they haven't told me yet. So okay. they just kind of surprised me. Last week they had us in a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. This week they asked if I would come do this. So they're yeah. just kind of throwing different things at us. So. Well, you know what? I know that everyone's going to benefit from seeing your beautiful picture, Sandy, <laughs> and getting people out there, spreading awareness about breast cancer and how it can impact everyday people like yourself and how you said you just had to keep moving on with your with your life. I know your story is inspiring others out there today. Well, the biggest thing I would say, if, if I could 
give advice to anyone is definitely get your mammogram. But also, if your family, probably one of the weirdest things that happened when I was going in for my second, um, I was going in for the biopsy, second ultrasound, I met a 17-year-old boy that had stage two. Wow. And it's apparently on the rise in men mm -hmm. also. Um, I, I would love to see insurance companies start to, with women, mm -hmm. younger. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, anything we can do to help Prisma, to help that mm -hmm. um, process, I think is excellent. Very yeah. important. You did keep moving through it. In fact, you continued to play pickleball, right, I while did. you were being treated. But you mm -hmm. had a lumpectomy? I had a lumpectomy on Wednesday. Um, we were doing our first road trip. Had a lumpectomy on Wednesday. The surgeon came in and he, it, my doctors were just fantastic. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can't, I'm the weird person when they asked me for this interview what type of cancer I had. I said, honestly, this is all I know because I never read anything about it. I didn't Google anything. I trusted my doctors from mm -hmm. the beginning, from the time they started. I, I knew I was in the right hands. I knew God put mm -hmm. me in the right hands. And it, it uh, <laughs> he just kind of threw his leg up and he goes, you're the coach, aren't you? And I was like, mm -hmm. He goes, I don't trust you. I'm gluing you. Oh. He was like, I don't trust you. So That's Wednesday, great. I had the lumpectomy. I, um, my better half, thank goodness, drove me Friday six hours to Nashville wow. so I could be on the sideline with the players. Ice pack on the chest, and we win in the last 20 seconds. And the first thing Look that happens that. is oh. the arms go up. Oh, and wow. I'm like, yeah, yeah he knows. you felt it. <laughs> yeah, yes, so, yes, yes. But the team at Prisma was so, they were so encouraging for me to stay active yes. because I was feeling like it. Yes. I actually had a pick line and not a port. Mm -hmm. So they were so gracious to continue to change my dressing and do everything for me. That's, that's fantastic. And played is. the first game in pink jerseys. Yes. They did. So that, that's how the team found out. Because the, the cool thing about this team is because I did ODP in the state, a lot of the girls that asked to come play last summer were kids that coached when they were 10, 11, 12 years old that were now yes. playing at South Carolina or mm -hmm. Virginia yes. at Pitt. And um, we had not gotten together as a team before we played the Liberty in an exhibition match last year. Locker room, go through the game. After the game, I'm talking to them, and I was like, oh, by the way, ladies, the reason you're wearing the pink jerseys is oh. I was actually diagnosed oh, wow. with cancer last week. And they're all like, you mm -hmm. can see the deer in headlights. And I'm like, look. Yeah. I'm good. God yeah. has got me. I'm yeah. good. We've got to focus on. And I just really kind of took it. I think they gave me strength without knowing mm -hmm. that if I kept going, it right. would show them. And mm -hmm. then scary, but it turned out okay. One of my player's mothers was diagnosed with the exact same oh, wow. breast cancer two months after. Mm -hmm. I told them in the conversations we had, she knew that her mom was going to be, you know, I kind of helped yeah. and talked That's nice. through. So it, it's, it, it's full circle and mm -hmm. it's uh, unfortunately in the world today, I think not having cancer is mm -hmm. more of a rarity than, right, than, than knowing someone some impacting sometime. so many people. Mm -hmm. Well, Sandy, thank you so much for coming on yeah. and sharing oh, your story. You. We know